And our third main topic today gets submitted to us by Rocky367, who writes, <laughs> Hey, John and crew. I hope you're all doing great. We are doing great. Thank you, Rocky. Well, the box office predictions for the Batman are finally out. And according to Box Office Pro, the opening weekend is between 145 and 100 and $85 million. This was basically the same first predictions for Spider-Man No Way Home. Do you think with great reviews and the hype for the Batman that it will be able to maybe even hit 200 plus million opening weekend? All right, Rocky, thanks a lot for sending that in. And yeah, of course, we talked the other day about kind of giving our first kind of, you know, completely basis ideas about what it could do and that several outlets are saying, hey, look, Batman's going to be big. Like the official projections were not out yet. But a lot of the outlets are saying it's going to be big. You know, last night we were out watching Jackass and they played that glorious Batman trailer. Glorious Batman trailer. And you could feel the excitement in the room. And, and and here's the thing. When we did that video a few days ago, I had a lot of people writing to me saying, listen, John, we're really excited about this movie. You guys know it's my number one most anticipated movie of the year. Uh, more than Doctor Strange, more than Spider-Man No Way Home, more than Thor, Love and Thunder, more than anything, more than Cyrano, more than The Northman, more than it all. The Batman is the movie I am excited about the most. But we've been waiting for the main box office business folks to come out, particularly Box Office Pro, who does a lot of the long, long um, uh, forecast projections on these box office things. And the projections have started to come out, and they are projecting that this thing could get upwards of 185 million dollars opening weekend 185 million dollars opening weekend which by the way puts it very like within a couple like within a couple of million that puts the batman within very easy striking distance of being a top 10 all time opening weekend film in the history of cinema and i'm going to tell you right now i'm changing my tune I think this is going to exceed 185 million now. I was going about 150 before, but reading some more of the stuff that's going on and getting some more information, I'm starting to think, you know what? 185 is probably going to be low. It's probably going to be low, just like the Spider-Man No Way Home projections were a little bit low. I think this thing is going to have stellar reviews. We don't know that, I'm, but I'm guessing from what I'm seeing, for everything we're hearing, Warner Brothers has a lot of faith in this movie. Yeah. I think this is going to have legs. I think people are more excited than we even thought, and I think this could be that. On top of all that, it would mean that this movie is going to become the biggest opening for any Batman movie in history. Any Batman movie in history. Because when we look at the three biggest Batman openings ever, believe it or not, I believe the number three biggest opening for a Batman film was the, the Lego Batman movie. <laughs> with $53 million. Then, of course, uh, The Dark Knight opened with $160 million. And then Batman versus Superman opened with $166 million. The Batman, the Batman right now is on pace to be the big, not just the biggest Batman film of all time, opening wise, but a top 10 biggest opening weekend in history. Now, we have said for a long time, all three of us, that we do not believe Batman is going to catch Spider-Man No Way Home. And, no. and, and I, I don't see any reality. There's just too many things working against it to catch that. But for this movie, again, still in a pandemic era, to be another top, to have two movies come out that crack the top 10 biggest opening weekends in cinematic history and have one become the biggest Batman opening in cinematic history is impressive nonetheless. Now, look, box office pro broke down kind of their reasons why they're doing these projections at these numbers. And I thought it'd be worth it for us to take a look at some of these reasons they're, they're spelling out here. First of all, in their pros, let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you guys to see. All right. They're saying the Batman is inarguably one of the most valuable, reliable pop culture icons when it comes to the box office evidenced by numerous blockbuster performances across multiple generations of moviegoers from Tim Burton's 1989 to Christopher Nolan's early 2000s trilogy and Zack Snyder's Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice in 2016. That is a good thing. We just looked at a couple of those numbers that opened up. They had a couple of Batman films open to north of $150 million. Why can't it do it here? They go on to say this. This is their next reason for putting it at like 185 advanced tracking social activity and trailer imprints for the batman are the strongest of any release excluding spider-man no way home since before the pandemic began 
Uh, preliminary metrics align closely with Captain Marvel, which scored the third highest March opening in history with $153.4 million, but that was three years ago. They go on to say, more bullish models are also generating notable trendiness with the Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, which opened with 177.4 in December 2019, and Batman vs. Superman that opened with $166 million in March of 2016, which is also the record for a DC film. 2017's Beauty and the Beast remake uh, bested the, the latter for what is the current March record at 174. Now, let's go down and look at some of the cons. They've got, they list a lot of big reasons for, but there's a couple of cons working against it because, you know, people will say, well, John, why don't you think it can catch Spider-Man No Way Home? Well, there's a couple of things here that they list. And Ray, this one is going to speak to you. At two hours and 55 minutes, <laughs> the Batman's long runtime could marginally limit show times per day. Uh, that's primarily a factor for opening weekend projections, though, and the relative lack of strong holdover from January and February should allow theater owners to, co to uh, compensate with plenty of screen space, but that doesn't help them for opening weekend. Also, they know. With what appears to be a noir-fueled, gritty take on Gotham City, it remains to be seen how this version of the character and the world around him walk the line between mainstream appeal and many comic book films versus the psychological nature of more violent aspects that could be off-putting to some parents and or kids. Exactly. I think that's a big one, because Rob, you've actually noted this one a couple of times, about the fact that where Spider-Man No Way Home really is more of a four-quadrant movie yeah the batman definitely does not look like a four quadrant movie and that will be a little bit of a limitation do you agree with their assessment of i this? totally agree with that you know i've been saying that even the scene even that funeral scene as much as i enjoy that funeral scene it's hardcore you know i mean it is adults in peril children in peril this is not jim carrey mugging or tommy lee jones mugging for the camera in in day glow colors right you know this is a this is more of a Fincher-esque seven feel to it. Although I have to say this. We were talking about this earlier. They released another piece of Michael Giacchino's score. The, the Riddler. Riddler's theme. Yeah. I mean, it has a, a animated series vibe to it. I really love that music. I mean, both pieces seem to be... The tone is a little different than I thought. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I do think the adult tone of it is still going to put off families. I don't think... You know, look... If I was seven years old, I would demand, I would scream and yell at my parents if they didn't take me to see this movie. And they would eventually give in because I was that good. But uh, <laughs> the uh, the uh, I still think that a lot of parents are like, I'm not going to take my kids to that. I, I, I actually think it's going to make probably more than 185. You think it's going to go north of Only that? Only because if you look at those numbers of the Batman films, The Dark Knight Rises wasn't family, really family no. friendly. No, that's true. And yeah. it made 160. Then you have a whole bunch of you have more people in the world now and like more Batman fans, maybe. Yeah. And there's there's some lenient parents now. You see the stuff on TV, right? Oh, the yeah. TV shows. Yeah. I mean, some of them just let their kids watch anything now. So, I mean, plus, like, if it's a good movie, too, right? If it's that's a good true. movie. I mean, that, that's the one catch, though, with, with, the, with the Christopher Nolan films is like, yeah, they were a little bit more gritty. Yes. But also, like, Dark Knight Rises was coming off of what some people consider to be the greatest comic book movie of all time in The Dark Knight. So that's kind of making a little bit of a leap and thinking, can the Batman be that good, too? It certainly looks like he can. How long has it been since the Batman has has had his solo film? When like was quite the Dark a while, Knight? right? When was the, what year was the I Dark Knight Rises? 2012? There's some people who have been waiting for this. So, yeah. So they're, they're going to take their chance... By going, okay, this better be good. A lot of people are curious. But there is But one. if it's really good, then people will go back. Well, that's the thing. Then that's you get that the, repeat view viewing stuff, right? Again, the, the three hour runtime may keep people like right. from seeing it multiple times. But, but those yeah. movies were long too. Yeah. No, they were. And Marry Me has already been out for the, in the theaters for like three weeks. So oh, yeah. It so, doesn't have yeah, to compete, yeah, you can't that, go it doesn't against have to compete with J Lo. Like, I mean, right? You've I, got to avoid I, I Marry agree. Me. I agree. I mean, she you know, does that's have three that weeks Batman already. connection. Yeah. After yeah. All. I mean, Owen Wilson is super hot coming off a of Loki. You know, Warner Brothers wanted to avoid Marry Me yeah. at all costs. Uh, it's true. Like, my um, God. But listen, Box Office Pro brings up one other kind of that. I think it's a really good point to think about here. And that's this. This is what the other thing they say is working against it. The reboot of any major franchise or character always comes with a set of built in risks. Not only must audiences refamiliarize themselves with the new version and cast, the weight of expectations can be challenging to overcome. 
Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy remains a beloved staple of many audiences, but after ending 10 years ago, enough time may have now passed that the franchise and an evolving audience may warmly embrace Matt Reeves' interpretation, but let's not forget it wasn't just the Christopher Nolan one. We also just had Ben Affleck's Batman out there, and we've been talking in the media a ton about Michael Keaton's Batman's coming back, and then we'd also been hearing a lot that Ben Affleck's coming back. And how many Batmans are... So we've also talked for a while that that could be another thing that works against it. Also, I mean, I hate to say it because I think it's it's not fair to him, but we still have fan... Conti- the fan contingent... There are people I talk to almost every day that still bring up Twilight. You know, oh. and they're like, I don't want to see Robert Pattinson as Batman. And I think that's completely unfair because we've it talked is. about that for so often on this show, you know, whether his great performances. But I think that he's he does, regardless, he's going to have to win over his performance is going to have to win over the audience. I think there's a, a a percentage of the audience that is skeptical. Hey, guys, we want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's episode, Stamps.com. Now, you know Stamps.com. They've been supporting the John Gambit Show for a while here. Now, let's face it. Going to the post office is time-consuming and really not the way you want to be spending your time. And that's why I highly recommend to do your mailing and shipping online with Stamps.com. Stamps.com allows you to mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. You can send letters, ship packages, and you can pay a lot less with discounted rates from UPS, uh, USPS, and more. You see, that's why Stamps.com is a must-have for any business. Whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller shipping out your orders, whether you're somebody who's just trying to send things out to your friends and family, or if you're a giant warehouse, like sending out thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle all all of it with absolute ease. And here's the best thing. With Stamps.com, you get up to 40% off of post office rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. And this is why Stamps.com is an absolute no-brainer. It saves you time. It saves you money. It's no wonder that nearly 1 million small businesses already use Stamps.com. So stop wasting your time going to the post office and go to Stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with my promo code Campia, just go up to that microphone up in the corner, click on that and enter my code campia you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale no long-term commitments or contracts needed again just go to stamps.com click on that microphone at the top and enter the promo code campia stamps.com never go to the post office again how perfect must he be for this role like how absolutely perfect must he be for this role if they know full well that there's going to be some backlash to the idea of Robert Pattinson playing him. But they went ahead and cast him anyway, and they're moving ahead with it, and they're doing it. I mean, that tells me that he is so perfect for what they're envisioning and what they're looking at. It, it must have been, that, he must be just that good. He must be just well, that, that and good. And the studio would know oh, that. There's no sound. Yes, there is. Oh, there is? Okay. Yeah. The studio would have to know that. I mean, they, they didn't just, you don't just cast, I mean, the studio, I'm sure people in the studio were like, wait a minute, you want to cast Twilight Boy as Batman? They would have to do a screen test. I mean, I, the money people would want to know. And I'm sure that after Matt Reeves did that screen test, they're like, okay, he we're looks, convinced. He looks great in the costume, by the way. I think he he's amazing. He absolutely That does. costume looks like it's the best costume Today, for I him, think for him too. I mean, it fits him. He looks like when he gets angry. This is a ferocious Batman. I mean, I thought Ben Affleck when the, the the warehouse scene in Batman v Superman when he attacks that warehouse, that was a ferocious Batman. That was one of my favorite scenes, if not my favorite scene in the movie. Did, and I love seeing a ferocious did, Batman. Did I ever ask you guys um, what you prefer more, long ear or short ear Batman? It. It, it, uh, I, I like the, I like the shorter ear. The short ears on Affleck are are great. Yeah, but on Michael Keaton, I like the longer ears. It it all depends. It all depends. Depends on the man. Depends <laughs> on the man. But I, so so let me let me put this to you then, Rob. Like right now, as we're looking at what we're looking at, we're hearing those the thing the pros and the cons working against it. We're hearing now the official projections are out. Now that we have a little bit more information, yeah. We won't hold you to it. It's still a month away. By the way, guys, it is officially one month. It is one February month, the fourth today. We are officially just one month away from the Batman opening. But now that we are one month Remember, away, this we is have a, a short month, and it's a short month. 
Now that we've got an official projection coming out right now, where do you see Batman falling on opening weekend? How big of a weekend do you think it's going to be? Look, happen? I did say earlier, I think this week, that I figured it was going to be 150, 150 million or less. Now with these projections, I'll go further. You know what I'm going to say? My projection, 165. Now, if it's a great movie and people are blown away, like this is the cinematic experience of a lifetime, you know, then it could be more. But I, but I think that it's, it's. I'm going to go with 165. I'm going to err on the conservative side. Ray, what about you? Where do you think it's going to come in? Since at? they projected the highest would be 185, I'll go 186. Wow, just, to be. just like the showcase. Just, show. just, just a little per- price is right there. Just to be a little bit, because you know what? Like me, if I miss a part, maybe because it's too long, I'm getting an- another ticket to watch that part that I missed. If it's yeah, but you're the only one. Everyone else will sit through the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, I will go one dollar. I think you're all over, so I'm gonna take the I'm gonna do the Price is Right thing. I'll go one dollar. No, I am. Uh, I'm completely doing a role reversal here. All right, I'm gonna say one ninety five. Ooh, I'm gonna say one ninety five. Wow. I I just think the way between the way they are marketing this movie right now is genius. The release of that one piece of score a while ago, then the release of the funeral scene, the Michael G. Aquino thing that's come out, those incredible total film posters, that amazing trailer that's playing in theaters right now. I'm feeling that momentum building. Now, I still don't think it's going to get close to Spider-Man No Way Home. That being said, I do think it's uh, because I before said 150. I'm making a $45 million jump on you. I'm going to say 195. So we're going to right now put in a poll here. So let's do a poll. I'll put this into the, uh, for those of you watching the live chat, the poll will simply be, um, here we go. How much will the Batman make opening weekend? And we're going to give a couple options here. We're going to go 150 or under. Then we're going to say uh, 150 to uh, 175. And then we are going to say 175 or more. So if you guys are watching live right now in the live chat, you should be able to see a there's a poll there now. How much will the Batman make on opening weekend? 150 million or under 150 to 175. Or 175 and higher, because I think we got the three, uh, the, the 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 three kind of spectrums in here. I want to know what you guys have to say about this. So right now, you guys have already—I just put it up. You guys have already fired in 300, 500 votes. Fifteen uh, percent of you are saying 150 million or under. Thirty-nine percent of you are saying 150 to 175, and 44 percent of you are saying 40 or saying 175 or higher now we now have 700 votes and it's still roughly the same 16 percent are saying 150 million or lower 40 percent are saying 150 to 175 44 percent are saying 175 or higher which again puts it on projection to become the biggest opening for any batman film in history and a top 10 possibly if, if, if i'm right it'll be a top 10 opening weekend of all time i don't know john i'm, I'm really smelling the ticket watch coming up i don't know maybe i I'm maybe kind of do have to do ticket now watch. because because the spectacle of going to a film like this too people are buying tickets like me i'm half excited just to see the amount of people that have the love for this character and yeah. also with I mean? the omicron variant leveling out and and, and it's been dropping cases steadily dropping, for the last week yeah or two. it's yeah. steadily dropping i mean when, if that's the case i think you know the people that <laughs> didn't go to spider-man no way home they might finally come out and decide maybe this is the movie that's going to get them to see films again when do tickets go on sale anyways the 10th i night? do not know okay, i, I we'll haven't heard maybe you can look that up right okay uh, but i don't know that i don't know that it's been announced yet but it's, it's got to be like within the next two weeks i would yeah. guess so, so we'll have to keep our eyes some open people are that. saying the ninth um but let me ticket watch some people are saying the 10th, the 10th. february 10th is what everybody's saying okay all right, so we'll keep our eyes. Maybe we'll have to do Ticket Watch in six days. Six days. Batman, Ticket Watch in six days. We'll keep our eyes open for that. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this news? Are you buying the hype? Are you believing that, yeah, Batman is going to crush it? Are you thinking, no, nah, no, nah, everybody's underestimating how much people only know Robert Pattinson as Twilight Boy, and that's all they're going to see? I-, I don't know. Whatever you guys are thinking about it, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.